In today's exercise, we will demonstrate the maintenance procedures for our 6-inch Badger, the BAP8. Engineered to clean 6 to 12-inch pipes, this Badger model features 5 jetting ports and can easily travel through straight pipes as well as long sweeping elbows. The P8 is pressure rated up to 15,000 psi and has a flow capacity of 55 gallons per minute. The rotation speed of this model adjusts manually, ranging from 50 RPMs to a maximum of 300, depending on the task at hand. As we progress through these procedures, these are the components we will refer to. The body with a port screw, jetting ports, heat tempered wear ring to protect the tool, a nut with a second port screw, speed control adjustment, and inlet port in this case half inch and PT. The rotation speed adjusts easily from the tool exterior using a thin one and one quarter inch wrench that comes with your Badger purchase. Note how the technician is adjusting the speed control sleeve with the Badger wrench. The P8 features a standard half inch NPT inlet connection and the front boring jet plugs easily to create a polisher jetting configuration. Before we get started, let's look at the tools required for these maintenance procedures. You'll need a large adjustable wrench, a pick, the BA300 wrench that comes with your Badger, a slot screwdriver, the BA305 spacer tool, white grease, blue goop anti-seize, snap ring pliers, a bearing separator, and an extra spacer tool. A press and a vise will also come in handy. Begin disassembly by locating the wrench flats on the body and use them to secure the tool in a vise with the inlet end up. Remove the port screw with a slot screwdriver. Then use an adjustable wrench and loosen the nut from the body. Finish unscrewing the nut by hand and before setting aside note the shaft seal inside. We'll remove that in a moment. Slip off the wear ring and while removing it Notice the ring has a lip on the inside. In this assembly, the lip faces the front of the tool. Set the ring aside for cleaning. You should now be able to lift the shaft assembly out of the body. There are no threads on the shaft assembly, so it should lift out easily. Be aware, viscous fluid usually spills out at this time. Note the additional parts on the shaft, including a small bearing ring, disc stack up, and large bearing. The speed control adjustment is also visible here. We'll disassemble the shaft assembly in a moment. You can finish disassembling the body in three easy steps. First, remove the port screw with a slot screwdriver. Second, remove the o-ring at the base of the threads. Third, gently pry out the shaft seal from the inside of the body, again with a slot screwdriver. This is what the body should look like with these parts removed. Set the body aside for cleaning. Note there are four factory installed pins in the Badger model, two on the interior wall of the body and two against the shaft. These pins are for the disc assembly and normally don't require any maintenance. We strongly recommend leaving them installed as is. Remove the shaft seal from the nut in the same way. Secure the nut gently in a vise and pry the seal out with a screwdriver. There is no o-ring on the threads and you already removed the port screw early on. Set the nut aside for cleaning. Next we'll tackle the shaft assembly. Place it on a workbench with the disc end up. You will see a carbide seat sitting on top of the shaft. There is a high pressure seal and multiple wave spring underneath the seat inside the shaft. Using a pick, reach down into the shaft and lift all three parts out of the shaft. Set these aside and plan to use replacement parts from your service kit when reassembling. Now remove the small bearing ring from the shaft. The press works best for this step and we recommend a makeshift spacer, in this case a 4 inch section of pipe. Take your bearing separator and position under the bearing against the shaft as shown. You do not need to tighten the separator lag bolts, just a nice fit against the shaft is fine. Press the shaft down so it falls out the bottom. You'll be left with the bearing, 
spacer, separator, and shaft. Back to the workbench for the next step, where we'll take apart the disc stack up. Start by placing the shaft on a workbench with the disc side up. Using snap ring pliers, remove the retaining ring and set aside. Now remove the discs and o-rings one at a time and pay attention to the positioning. This will be a big help during reassembly. First, note there are two types of discs and two types of o-rings. There are four brass discs and five stainless ones. The brass discs have a wider inner diameter to accommodate an o-ring near the shaft and they have notches on the outside. The stainless discs also have notches, this time in the center ring to fit the pins on the shaft. We'll go over this again during reassembly, but it helps to watch how the assembly fits together. Next, remove the large bearing from the shaft. The press comes in handy again here. Set the bearing aside. Take the shaft back to the vise and secure it using the flats on the inlet connection as shown. With your BA300 wrench, loosen the speed adjustment sleeve and unscrew it by hand, exposing the two O-rings on the shaft underneath the threads. Use a pick to remove the O-rings. Your disassembly is now complete. Wash all appropriate parts and note the replacement items in your service or overhaul kit. Plan to use all the new parts. It makes the most of your downtime. We'll review the contents of the maintenance kits at the tail end of this video. Begin reassembly at the vise where you will replace the speed adjustment sleeve on the shaft. Secure the shaft using the wrench flats on the inlet connection. Mount the two o-rings on the shaft as shown and brush white grease on the o-rings. Now brush blue goop on the threads and screw on the sleeve all the way down to the inlet connection. However, do not over tighten. Note how the speed adjustment sleeve rotates when the technician moves it back and forth. Now head for the press where you will mount the bearings and seals. Begin with the large bearing. There is no wider inner race on this bearing so it can go either way. Make certain the bearing rests firmly against the shoulder. Now place a new o-ring at the base of the threads on the body. With your BA305 spacer tool place the shaft seal on the spacer with the lip side down. We recommend using P80 Grippet or a similar lubricant when installing all shaft seals. Brush it on both sides of the seal and then gently press the seal into the body, rotating the body for a nice fit. Now flip the BA305 spacer and prep the large shaft seal in the same manner. Brush with lubricant, mount it on the spacer with the lip side down and press it into place, rotating the nut as you do. When installed properly, it should look like this. Next, we'll reassemble the disc stack up. Place all the parts on the workbench and begin with a stainless disc. Note the notches on the center ring. Slide the disc on the shaft so the notches line up with the posts on the shaft. With the first disc on, place a small o-ring over the shaft and down to the first disc. Place a brass disc on next. It will fit around the small o-ring you just mounted. Take another stainless disc and place it on top. Here it gets a little different. Now place two o-rings on the stack up, a small one over the shaft and a large one around the outside of the stainless disc as shown. Repeat the process for the entire stack up using all the discs and all the o-rings. With all the discs in place, use snap ring pliers to mount the retaining ring, locking the entire assembly on the shaft. As you are stacking, note that all the discs have two drill holes. This is to allow viscous to pass through the tool during operation, so as you mount the discs on the shaft, adjust the discs so the holes line up. With that accomplished, head back to the press to mount the final bearing. This ring can be mounted either way, just make sure it is firmly against the shoulder on the shaft. That's it for the press, so let's head back to the workbench where you'll replace the seat, seal, and wave spring into the shaft. Grease all parts generously and start with the wave spring. Make sure it is nestled down flat in the shaft, otherwise all the parts won't fit. Next, 
the high pressure seal goes in with either side facing up. Press the seal down far enough to leave a 1 16th inch recess at the top. Place the carbide seat in that recess with the flat side down, chamfer side up. You're ready to put the shaft back in the body. Prep the shaft seal with grease and note the two pins along the wall of the body should match the notches on the outside of the disc assembly. One handy hint, the pins on the inside also match the wrench flats on the outside of the body. Simply line everything up and the two components should come together easily. Now fill the body with viscous fluid. We suggest using the nut as a stand and then rest the body on top with the shaft end facing up as shown here. Replace the port screw. In this exercise, we are using fast or thinner viscous fluid to fill the body. There are several things to note here. You want to make sure all the bubbles are up and out before moving on. Here's a couple of tricks. First, pour in a little fluid, let it settle, and then spin the shaft with a wrench. This will help get the bubbles up and out. Second, Pour the fluid into one side only each time as the technician is doing here. This way the air bubbles come out the other side more easily. Spin the shaft frequently until all the bubbles are up and out. This is a slow process so don't rush it. Brush blue goop on the body threads and move the body to the vise. Be careful when you move the tool not to grab it by the shaft. It could lift right out. Instead, lift the tool from under the body or you'll have a mess on your hands. Secure in the vise using the wrench flats on the body with the inlet end up. Top off with a little more viscous fluid and turn the shaft for bubbles. Generously grease the shaft seal in the nut and slide the wear ring into place with the lip side against the nut as shown. Screw on the nut. Use a large adjustable wrench to finish the job. Note how viscous fluid oozes from the port as the nut is tightened. This is normal. Wipe off the excess with a rag and replace the port screw. Your reassembly is now complete. Before we wrap things up, let's look at the maintenance support available from Stone Age. We recommend having one or more of these kits on hand to minimize your downtime. The BA602 seal kit contains a high pressure seal and a carbide seat. The BA612 toolkit features a BA305 spacer tool and snap ring pliers. The BA606 disc kit contains written instructions, four brass discs, five stainless discs, large O-rings, small O-rings, and a retaining ring. This is the BA600P8 service kit. It contains written instructions, viscous fluid, a syringe applicator, port screws, a wave spring, high pressure seal, and a carbide seat. The BA610 overhaul kit naturally has more items. It includes written instructions, viscous fluid, two bearing rings, shaft seals, multiple O-rings, high pressure seal, carbide seat, wave spring, and a retaining ring. That's it. Thanks for watching, and remember, our staff of technical specialists are always on hand to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Have a great day, and keep on blasting.